Using Google Apps for education can be a great way for the students to collaborate with each other, but also it can provide a place where students can have a repository of their work for showcasing on portfolios or for turning in and submitting the work to the teacher. And you can go in and check it yourself as a teacher. So the first step you're going to want to do to make sure that um, students can do all these things is to have a Google Apps for Education account, which I'm not going to go over in this video. Um, and then you need to create your users for your classes. Now there's a few different ways to do this. You can add several users at the same time by uploading a CSV file, a comma separated values file, which you can export from a spreadsheet program like Microsoft Excel and you can have all the data there in one place um, or you could export it from a student information system and format it that way or you can just enter them manually depending on how many there are so I'm going to show the example of entering students manually and you'll want to have a protocol in place for a logical primary email address that's their login account that they're going to have and in this case we're using their first name dot last name at our domain and we're going to set the passwords for the students not let them choose themselves uh, in many cases this is the best bet because then you have it on file and you can give it to them you can give it to the parents you can give it to the teachers anybody who needs it will have it so standardizing student email addresses and passwords in a logical way um, in this case we'll keep the password fairly basic just we'll use their first name and uh, a student ID number Okay, and we're not going to require a change of password. We're going to have them keep using the same one. So now that I've created a, a student account, you're going to be able to see what it would look like for that student to log in and how you can set up a system where anything they create for your class can be very easily shared with you and you can access any of it for grading, for collaborating, for providing feedback to the students, etc. Now, when you create student accounts on the Google Apps site, you're giving them access to all the basic Google Apps for education. So that's Gmail, Google Calendar, Google Drive, uh, and all the Google Docs things, Docs, Spreadsheets, Slides, and they can create websites as well with Google Sites. And that's it, basically it. That's the basics. Any other apps or things that work in Chrome browser, um, they're not actually getting access to automatically from this, just the Google stuff. And the key one here is Drive, which includes Google Docs and that allows the students to create work online as well as uploading files like photos or videos or work that they've done on their computer and Gmail may, may be another important one it's also important to talk a little about Gmail because uh, by default the Gmail settings are open uh, so on our dashboard here you can actually change the Gmail settings and initially it's not a sheltered email system uh, the students have free access to the email and they can send emails to anybody or receive emails from anybody just like you would uh, as an adult individual user of Gmail or Yahoo Mail or any email system it works the same way and so for high school students and college students that might be good to just teach personal responsibility and teach them how to use the Gmail responsibly and let them have control over their own service but um, for younger students like if you're going to use this at an elementary school as I am, uh, I don't want my students to be getting spam and to be able to get emails from total strangers um, willy-nilly. So what I'm going to do is you can actually change settings for the Gmail account. So there's lots of settings you can set, but one of the ones that I have set is underneath of restricting settings. Okay, so I've created a restrict, you, you can create a restrict delivery setting. And what it does is I've, I want to only allow students to send emails to each other and to the teachers within our domain. So I want to build that for them to receive that information from each other, but not be communicating with people outside of the Calistoga School District. Uh, that's not really necessary right now for what we're doing. So I've set this delivery restriction on there to help shelter the students from spam delivery and from communications with the outside world that aren't necessary for what we'll be doing in class. Um, and that's one way you can help protect the students and help maintain their privacy and their safety. Now, when students have accounts created and set up, um, they can log in using whatever name that you have provided for them for their email and putting at and then your school domain that you've chosen to use. 
and then they'll, they'll use the assigned password that you've given them. And once you're in, it gives you a little welcome to your new account blurb and talks about their terms of service and the privacy policy and says you also have to follow your domain administrator's privacy policy. And then once you accept it, it takes you into your account for the first time as a student account. Uh, and it tells you what you have available. Let's get started. Now it takes you to a little dashboard screen that has links to all the different areas and uh, the main ones that students would be using would likely be Google Drive that's where they can store their work upload their work and create work using Google Docs um, possibly you may have them use some Gmail and some calendar um, and likely Google Sites for creating web pages those are the key ones for Google for Education so I'm gonna take them into Drive first because really that's the the crux of where the productivity is gonna happen in schools now, Google Drive is a storage and a cloud storage system, so you can access your files from any type of computer or device pretty much. You may have to install an app on an Android or iPad device to make it easily accessible, um, but you can upload things to it from those devices. A little bit harder to work on Google Docs directly from those devices. It works better from a computer or a Chromebook. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to set up their folders so that the teacher can easily access your work. So as a student, you would need to create a folder for your class with this create folder button or you can click the create button over here and choose a folder. And this is the very first step that I have my students do and that I would recommend having students do as one possible way of making it easy to share your files with the teacher. You can create a folder with your student name. So here's my student name. And then I could put the class or the teacher or the room name. So I'll just call this student name and then the room number that they're in. Uh, if you were actually at a middle school or a high school, you might put algebra one or the teacher's name. And then we can call it files because all of our files for that class will go in there. Anything that I want Mr. G to see will go in the Mr. G folder. So when I create that folder right now, it's not yet shared with my teacher. I can click on the folder and go into it and I'm in that folder now you can see up here. I can go back with the little um, crumb path here. But what we need to do is check the folder and then choose to share it with the little face and the plus sign up here. So that'll allow me to share that folder with the teacher. Right now, the only person it's shared with is nobody, with you, with yourself. So we can invite people to be able to share that folder. So I'm going to go ahead and invite the teacher. And the teacher should have full access to be able to look at it and make changes to it as necessary because that will allow the teacher to add comments to it or make revisions, give me feedback. So I can click share and save and it will send an email to the teacher telling that it's shared with them. Now once you've shared that folder with the teacher, anything you put in that folder, including other folders, will automatically by default be shared with the teacher. So this makes it very simple. You can make one of these for each of your classes. And for any class you have, any work you do, you'll just go in there and do the work in there. So for example, in room 28, we'll do work in a few different areas, and we want to keep it nice and organized, so we'll create another folder, and we can have a folder for all of our math work to be done. And it said create and share. So when you do it, you'll see a little face, a little figure that shows up. That indicates that the folder shared. I can make a shared reading folder. And now any of my subjects or any of my work that I do, if I had certain themes, I could make a theme one folder or a theme two folder. For example, I could go into reading and if I really did a lot of work and wanted to keep it organized, I could make a theme one courage folder. So you can make a lot of subfolders here and everything will be shared as long as it's inside of underneath this uh, room 28 files that was originally shared. So every time I make a folder anywhere underneath of that folder, whether it's inside of math or inside of reading, doesn't matter. Every time I make something or a file, let's say I wanted to create a vocabulary file, I'll show how to do this in a different video, but you can create a presentation and it says create and share. It's in a shared folder so that it's going to share the work. So what that does is it lets the teacher go in and automatically access all of the student work. You don't have to send it as an email attachment. You don't have to um, upload it or download it to a special place, all you do is do the work right there in your shared folder or upload the work to the shared folder and the teacher will be able to see it. Now once students have created and shared their folders with me, then I can easily access them from my own Google Drive under the shared with me tab and all of the folders that have been shared with me are now accessible in this area. Now I teach only a single 
class every day uh, because I'm an elementary school teacher. So what was logical for me was to have students put their name first on the folder and then I can find them easily by alphabetical order. Now if you were teaching multiple sections or multiple periods such as a, a junior high, a high school, or a college level course, you would probably want to put the course name or the course number first. For example, you could put period one algebra and then put the student name at the end if you wanted them to add their name on there. Now when I click on that and go into it I can access any of those folders within there that they created. Any folders or files they created within their shared classroom folder are now accessible by me. So if I go into the theme one courage folder and they've created a hatchet vocabulary I can now click on that and see what they've done. And in this case I may want to make changes to it. You can as a teacher, if the student gave permission to edit, you can make edits and changes to it, and they will be able to see those revisions being done if they're collaborating in real time. Uh, another thing you can do is you could insert comments to add feedback, uh, criticism, or grading notes. For example, if you're using a rubric and part of it was spelling, you could say spelling here and make note of what the problem was and add that comment, and it will show up on the side without changing the original work of the student. Another way that can work well if you want more control over setting up the student folders to share work with you, um, or especially if you have multiple different courses that you teach and you want it to be really nicely organized, is you can create a folder yourself within your own uh, Google Apps account. You can create a folder for each of your courses. So if I was at a high school, I might have period one algebra, and I could have period two algebra, period three uh, geometry maybe. Just make a period one algebra and a period two geometry. If you're at a college level, you might have the course numbers or section numbers for your classes. And then within each, within each one, you can go in and you could create a folder for each of your students in there. So we could create a folder, let's say by last name this time, comma first name, which is a pretty common way of alphabetizing students in courses as you get older. And we've now created a student folder and we can make that for each student if we wanted to. And so now I've got my student folders organized by last name, comma, first name, and I can go ahead and check that folder and share it with that student. So for example, if I wanted to share the student example student's folder with that student and give them full editing rights, then they can create documents within that folder to share with me. So I've gone ahead and created a folder for that student within my own period one algebra folder and if that student logs in they'll be able to access that folder. So now when I log in as a student I would be able to go into the shared folders that have been shared with me and see that I have an example student folder for within Mr. Gdenius's classroom. And so if I go into that folder this is now within the period one algebra folder for Mr. G's class and I could go ahead and upload or create documents right there and it's actually a shared folder under the shared with me so it's actually a folder that was created by the teacher for me to place my work into and I can go into that and share my work with the teacher that way. So those are two different ways that you can go about organizing and setting up student folders for creating and sharing work with you so you can grade it, you can check it very easily without any sort of email attachments, uh, flash drives being used or anything else like that. Just all right online, directly right in the folder and nothing really needs to be changed once it's done.